Okay, I'm just gonna show you the slightly different protocols for a child. Remember, a child is anything from one to puberty, okay? If it looks like a child, treat it like a child. Hello, checking for danger. Hello, first aider, can I help you? Open your eyes, open your eyes. Okay, I need some help. Get me some help, just stay there for a second, I'll do some checks. Checking in the mouth for any obstructions, opening the airway, assessing for breathing for 10 seconds. Okay, note the difference. I go straight to rescue breaths, five rescue breaths. Heel of one hand. Same rhythm, rate of compression for an adult. The depth is a third of the chest depth. So whatever how big the child is, a third of the chest depth. 30 compressions, 28, 29, 30, and I then revert to 30 to two, so I do two rescue breaths. Now you can use one hand, because it reduces the amount of power you're using, but if you're struggling with one hand, you have got the option of using two hands, but just don't use as much force. So 28, 29, 30, and again, I'll demonstrate the use of these bits of kit to protect yourself. Now, when you blow, you obviously blow with a lot less uh, air. You don't need to blow as hard. 28, 29, 30. This time with the pocket mask. And again, as before, I just carry on. So that the only change in protocol is how hard you push on the person's chest. And it's a third of their chest depth and how hard you, uh, you, you blow with the rescue breaths. Now, the only thing with children and babies is you start with five rescue breaths, and that's because, unlike with an adult, it's gonna be a heart issue. With a child, it's more likely to be an airway issue, okay? As before, if you can't physically get air in, just make sure you've opened the airway properly, and if you still can't get air in, just focus on chest compressions. Now, even with COVID now, they recommend that you should still risk doing rescue breaths on a child and a baby because the airway breathing, rescue breathing, is vitally important uh, on increasing the, uh, the chance of survival on a child and a baby. So you must do rescue breaths. But again, these are essential to protect yourself, okay? Okay, we're gonna look at baby CPR. Um, and I'm going to discuss the use of a defib on children and babies at the, uh, the end of the CPR bit. So with a, a baby, anything under the age of one, okay? So with babies, very important, with CPR, we do our checks, checking for danger. We don't bother with the, hello, can you hear me? We just tickle the feet, no response. We can check for breathing, fingertips on the chest and listening very carefully for any breathing, up to 10 seconds. And then if they're not breathing, you go straight into five rescue breaths. Now, with the face shield, exactly the same, just cover the mouth and the nose, and you're gonna cover the whole mouth and nose with your mouth, and five rescue breaths. And it is literally just two little puffs. Two fingers in the middle of the chest, third of the chest depth, same rate of compressions as for an adult and a child. So just so you can see what that looks like doing the rescue breaths without the face shield. 28, 29, 30, two rescue breaths this time from here, keeping my fingertips on the chest so I can feel the inflations. And I would carry on, okay? Now in relation to the use of a defib, statistically, it's very unlikely that a child or a baby is gonna have a heart rhythm that you can actually shock. So even if you put a defibrillator on them, it's unlikely that it will say shock advised. It was more, more than likely it will say no shock advised because it's not the heart that's causing the problem, it's a breathing issue, a respiratory issue. But if we use a defibrillator on a child or a baby, the position, instead of going up on the shoulder here with the first pad, that goes in the middle of the chest. The second pad goes in the middle of the back, okay? Now, the Zoll Defib, you have special paediatric pads that you plug in, so you take out these pads, and you plug in your paediatric pads. The machine will automatically recognise this is a child or a baby. Now, with an adult, it delivers 150 joules of electricity to the pads. With a child or a baby, 50 joules, so it reduces it. Now, here's the thing. 
directions are if you don't have pediatric pads or you don't have a machine that you can switch to infant child mode, you just use adult pads because this, this child or the baby is clinically dead. You can't make the situation worse. So you use the pads that you've got, but you always put front, front and back. So unlike this, this configuration with the Z uh, configuration, you just have pads, a small pad front and rear. So these, this is a configuration for adult pads. With child pads, it's just two little pads. One goes on the front, one goes on the back. So the one that goes on the side will go on the back. The one that goes on the top shoulder will go on the front so that the heart is between the two pads. 